Welcome back. I thought we would tackle a little bit smaller, simpler project today after the uh, mega draw knife project. And I thought we would get back to the blacksmith's challenge concept. You notice I have lots of things on the workbench. I've got some axes, adzes. I have a whole bunch of punches and chisels on the bench. And this is all going to be part of that dragon head door knocker from the wrought iron. But I'm going to get more into what these are and why I have them scattered all over my workbench right now. As well as the book that you may have seen a glimpse of in the beginning of the video there. We'll explain all that maybe in the next video and get started on making some tools like this. Specifically for the purpose of doing the dragon head door knocker. But today I thought we would go back to our half inch by half inch by three inch pieces of bar. I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to make a fork and a spoon. We've made spoons before. We made a flux spoon. We made a cooking fork. But I thought I'd make a little set that you could use to actually eat with if you so chose to eat with iron utensils. Most people don't, but it won't hurt you. The first thing I'm going to do is draw these out into a little flat bar. And this is just sort of a judge by eye size. I'm going for about a quarter inch thick, about three quarters of an inch wide, and that makes a bar that it's about four and a half inch long. Doesn't need to be that exact size, but try to make both bars, the one for the fork and the one for the spoon, the same, so you can make these into a matching set. So this is our goal with our two pieces of half inch square bar. going to do that since I've already done one I'm just going to do it to the other one now why not just start with quarter by three quarter well if you just want to make the little fork and a spoon you can certainly do that but the whole purpose of the blacksmith challenge concept is to always start with the exact same size of material and every project you make uses that material and by thinking and working like a blacksmith you rearrange the material and rearrange the mass until you achieve the effect you want. So starting with the bar pre-made sort of defeats the initial purpose of the challenge. So we're three quarters wide and a quarter thick there. So we'll just go back to the first end and refine that lump a little bit and we should be there. So is that the same length as the other one? Not quite. Still a little bit thick. I think I'll thin it out. One more heat here. Should be about a quarter inch longer. To this is a little wide, so we can take it down in this dimension just a little bit. And we should be right on the money to make something out of it. OK, 
Okay, that's the same as the other one. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create some fullers in here and this will isolate the mass that will become either the spoon bowl or the tines of the fork. Now you can do this in a smithing magician very easily with some half inch fullers in there. Wonderful tool for that job. You can do it with a spring fuller if you've got one the right size. Again, this is a half inch bar, so this spring fuller would do this very nicely. But if you don't have either of those tools, you can do it right here at the edge of the anvil, lining up the edge of your hammer without a, hopefully you've got a hammer without a sharp corner here, slightly radius, radius edge of the anvil, and work very carefully. Don't go off or you're going to end up with your shoulders not lighting up. So let's try it that way. So we're just very carefully work right at the edge of the anvil. And it pays to go back and forth because the effect of the hammer and the effect of the anvil will not always be exactly the same. Do a little straightening, but you can end up creating a nice shoulder that way. Doing it this way can be a real skill developer. The key is you want both of these to really look pretty much the same when you're through with this step. bit more refinement. My blows haven't been perfect here so I need to work out a little here. That yeah, looks a little bit better. I've left this essentially a quarter inch thick and I've taken it down till it's about three-eighths of an inch wide. Pretty much exactly. Now what I'm going to do, before I work on the, the spoon or the fork end, I've got a pair of box jaw tongs I'm using that holds that very nicely. So I'm going to refine the handle end first. It's hard to hold on to the spoon or the fork. And I want to take this, and there's no reason you have to do it the way I'm doing it. I just randomly decided I'm going to try and thin this out to about an eighth by half. So it's going to stretch considerably. It'll end up being fairly long little spoon or a fork. But we're going to do that, then we'll finish the other end, and then we'll do some sort of a ring or something on the top. This is a good thing to accomplish over the horn of the anvil. Do some refining on the face and see if that's what we want or not, but it's uh, getting pretty close. It's a hair under an eighth at the very tip, so I think I can thin this section out a little bit more. Don't forget, I want to do be it about a half inch wide, so I'm going to thin it out in that direction as well. Putting a very nice round on the end of this, 
which wouldn't be a bad way to just end the whole thing. Or we can put a ring or a punched hole if you want to hang these on a hook or something. But you know what? I'm liking that so much I may just leave that. See if the other one comes out about the same. But if not, we'll make it come out the same. But this still has fairly crisp corners and I think if we're going to hold on to this we probably don't want real crisp corners. So I'm going to bevel the corners off. This is some place that a few passes with a file might make a very nice round edge. But you can come pretty close just off the hammer. pretty happy with the, the handle presently, although I think I'm going to want to put some decorations in and that probably will be easier to do now. But I don't even think it needs to be very hot. I'm going to put the pattern I've used before. And we're going to just start it cold. I think we will heat it up to finish this. This is an X. with four little dots, or X's and O's, which Daryl Nelson refers to as hugs and kisses. He's the one that I saw first do this. So I'm going to go ahead and get that hot, finish that little decorative element, and then we'll do the end. Take a center punch and put the little O's in, or just center punch marks, in each one of the little triangle spaces. Do your best to get these centered or they look really funny later. And there's no going back. Once you mess it up, it's just messed up. Which might be a good reason to start the layout cold so you can hold on to this and use a more delicate punch. Ended up with a double mark there. So there's our little decorative element there. Now it's time to turn this into something you can eat with. I'm going to make a spoon out of one of these. I'm going to knock the corners of that front edge off and kind of round it up. And then I'm going to taper it out just a little bit there. And taper it out just a little bit back here so it's thicker right in the middle. And that'll make sense in just a minute. see that or, or not. But now as we peen this and spread it wider, it's going to spread more in the middle where it's thicker and not so much on the ends where I don't want it to spread. I'm going to peen it wider. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to work away from me. And I'm going to go back to the middle and work back towards me. up the, the shape a little bit. It's probably still a little bit thick, so I think I'll go back and do that again. I think I'd like this a little bit longer. I'm going to stretch it out some this way. It's your spoon. You make it the shape you might like. Now this has got some oddities in it that are definitely going to have to be 
cleaned up with a file before I dish the spoon. Want that as smooth as you can at this point though because it's gonna be you can't get in there easily to polish it. And you don't want a rough snaggy spoon. These real light blows at a low heat really help smooth things up. But because that's so irregular, I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and I'm going to clean up those edges and then I'll be right back. I have cleaned this up so that it is much more symmetrical and made sure there are no sharp corners to snag your lip when you use it. So now we want to dish the spoon and make it so it will actually hold stuff. And for that we're going to go to a swedge block. Now this swedge block is much bigger than we need for a little spoon like this. But we can work it around and make it work. It doesn't have to match the depression exactly. And I don't want to create a whole bunch of big ball peen marks. Instead I'm trying to create a whole bunch of little teeny tiny ones so it has an even finish. I also want the spoon to kick up a little bit right here and as we were peening that to spread it initially with the cross peen this handle was a little floppy and it took a really nice bend and I think I'm just going to leave that. Trying to create an even pattern of little tiny marks is pretty much planishing, probably not exactly. Planishing, you'd end up with the marks on both sides ideally because you do it over a stake. But I think that spoon is done except for a finish. So for a fork, we're going to take a slightly different approach. We're going to draw out a point on the end of our piece we left for the eating end. I'm going to spread that out so that it's about a quarter inch wide and eighth inch thick at the very end. Try and make it as even as possible. Now we're going to need to split that. I'm going to lay this out cold so I don't have to worry about losing heat or be in a hurry because my hand is being scorched or anything like that. Plus it doesn't quite go as deep, so if you're off a little, it will be easier to correct this cold line now. Once you start cutting it hot, you're pretty well committed to the process. So this gives me a line I can find again with my chisel. I've gone ahead and put down a cutting plate just to be sure we don't cut into the anvil. This is thin enough that I think we might make it all the way through in one heat. At least right there in the end we're going to. The sharper your chisel is, the less cleanup you're going to have to do on this. There will almost always be a little bit of cleanup though. It's a good idea to clean up your cut with a chisel at the vise and get it straight bottomed here. That way it doesn't taper. It's a good time to open this up a little bit. 
and you're going to need to get in there and work these tines some. And this one isn't too ragged, but I think I would like to file it anyways, just to be absolutely sure. And I've just got an old worn out half round file. And all I'm going to do is take the, the ragged edge off. can forge those tines to shape. Sorry about the screeching. I didn't go hide the microphone. Uh, I should have done that. That's all the filing we should see for this video though. So let's open the split up just a little bit more. And we can get in on the anvil and just clean up the ties. These don't need to be needle sharp. I guess it depends on what you plan to eat with it. And they can be square or they can be round. Square would certainly be the easiest. Try and keep this shoulder refined while you're at it. But I think round might be a little bit more comfortable. So I'm going to round these up. We've already taken them to a square cross section, so now we go to an octagon. And then we can start rounding it up. Essentially giving it plainishing blows at this low heat. Let's do the other one. And I still have a little bit of my shoulder that isn't symmetrical. Trying to get this as clean and smooth as you can. But at this stage, if you think you need to file these because they've got a ragged spot or if they aren't exactly the same length, sometimes if your split isn't off, they don't draw out the same. Let's see, this is inch and three quarters there, inch and three quarters there. So we're the same length on these, but if they're not, this is when you should trim them, file them up. If they need to be pointier and sharper, it's a good time to do it. Once you get everything curved and shaped, it gets harder to get in there. So we're going to go to the horn of the anvil next. By the way, if you've ever wanted to make a snail, that looks like that might be a good way to make the, the horns or antenna or whatever they're called on a snail. Just try to bend these evenly around the horn. Now remember I make this one more to eat with than to cook with so they need to be uh, fairly close in. They cool off fast. You don't want to kink them or break them so get it back in the fire if you need to. little bit wider of a spread than the other one was. That looks better. If you're not sure what you want the shape to look like, head to the kitchen, get out a fork, and see what it looks like. Looks like these are just a hair off lengthwise. That'll be easy to correct with a file though. So it's just a matter of comparing the two and working on it until you think it's about the same. I 
Now these are thin enough you can do some of this a little bit on the cold side but not too much because it's a good way to kink something. That's not bad. The tongs kind of get in the way and make it hard to see, so you may have to wait till it's cooled off to really be sure. But I think we can get really close here. spot the handle it's where it's going to want to kink and it's not going to want to bend at the thick spots. I think that's close enough for what we're after today. I went ahead and took that to the wire wheel and made sure it was good and scale free gives it kind of, kind of silvery highlights. Now I'm going to heat this up put some wax on it. And for the wax I'm using natural beeswax. The Johnson's paste wax I usually use isn't something I want to eat. But beeswax should be food safe. You could use any food safe oil you want to use, a vegetable oil. Let's try to use something that won't go rancid too easily. beeswax should be a good finish for these. Here we have a nice little fork and spoon. The fork ended up eight inches overall and the spoon ended up seven and three quarter inches overall. Just almost exactly the same size. Now in use you would treat these just like you would your favorite cast iron skillet clean it however you need to clean it. If it's starting to look dry or wants to rust a little bit, simply put some more oil on it. If you do that with it warm or hot, it will soak in better and it will last longer. So you can put it in the oven at 300 or something for a little while and then put an oil that you like to use on it. Lots of different edible oils you can use, but again, try to avoid the ones that go rancid and start to smell funny because nobody wants utensils that smell funny. But they're perfectly safe to eat with. No reason you can't do it. They're probably big enough you can do a little bit of light cooking with them. As long as it's not something real hot or splattery. But I think I'm going to keep these to uh, use to eat. I may put them in the glove box of the car so I don't have to use that cheap plastic junk that they give you when you're traveling. And we can have a nice set of real silverware in the car. Or ironware I guess it would be. But that means I need to make two because there's usually two of us when we travel. Remember, this is part of that blacksmith challenge. And you don't have to make these. You don't have to do the challenge exactly the way I am. The challenge is simply to explore what a blacksmith can do in manipulating the mass of a piece of material. It isn't about starting with the stock size that is the closest to what you want to make, which would make sense in most cases. This is about seeing what can you really do with a piece of material so you start seeing the possibilities in your head. It's to challenge your own imagination. It's not me challenging you to make this project. It's you challenging yourself. So whether you start with half by half by three or some other material, give the blacksmith challenge a try. I think it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing these little projects and each one is unique and different and presents its own little challenges. Lots of skills involved here. Drawing material out, redimensioning material, swedging, dishing, hot cutting, chiseling, probably a few other things. A little bit of hot rasping, a little bit of filing. So lots of little skills go into a little project like this and they are completely usable. They would make good gifts. You might even be able to sell them at craft fairs. Although if you're doing that, you probably ought to start with a different size material because the extra drawing outs probably not uh, cost effective. 
But anyways, I encourage you to take a look at the Blacksmith Challenge. I'll put a link right up here to the original video or one of the more recent videos I've done on it so that you have a place to go look and, and see. And then I also have a playlist that has all the stuff I've done for the Blacksmith Challenge. So there's lots of little projects that started off as half by half by three. Anyways, I hope you found that interesting. Hope you can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Use that subscribe button down there. I think for the next video we're going to start making some specialty tools for carving a dragon's head and then we'll start looking at our dragon's head. I've ordered a bunch of three-quarter inch S7 rod which is what I like to make tools like this out of and we'll talk more about that when we get to that but I think that'll be the next video I have planned whether it's tomorrow or the next day I'm not sure but we will get on with that and we will get on to that piece of wrought iron Roy sent and we will get to the the dragon's head door knocker I've got lots of good ideas for it I just have to make a decision on exactly which one I'm going to do in the meantime I hope you can get out to your shop I hope you can make something do try to challenge yourself one way or another but have fun stay safe wear your safety glasses and come back we'll see you for the next one